welcome back to AM Live. I'm here with John, and John is going to tell us all about CASA today. Good morning, and thank you for allowing me to do that You're this very morning. welcome. It's good to have you back, and I'm Thanks. interested in finding out about this. Uh, it's a court-appointed special advocate, and tell our viewers what this entails. Court-appointed special advocate is a program that puts volunteers who are trained mm -hmm. working with children who are going through the juvenile court system, abused and neglected children. That can be of all ages, from yeah. from birth to 21. Yeah. And this program was started in Seattle about 40 years ago, so it's a really, really a, a, a well-established program, and it has spread across the country in the course of that time. We've had a program in Amador County for about 10 years now. It requires the support of the juvenile court judge mm -hmm. because that's where the referrals come from. Right. And if the judge doesn't agree with the program, then we don't have a program. But the judges in this county are exceptionally supportive of the program. Right, and have, there, there's nothing worse, John, than seeing a, a, a young child go through any type of neglect or abuse. It's if, terrible. If, if you ever had the, the opportunity or the misfortune to, to sit through a court session yeah, and no. see the kinds of things that have, that have gone on and the struggles that the children are making and that right. families are making trying to get their lives back together right. and making decisions about them is an extremely difficult situation it's, and it really requires some people some judges with some some real heart and some and, and some real good decision right. making and ours are superb yeah we have well, we have wonderful judges in this county the the, the fact is is that uh, don't think it doesn't happen because it's a sleepy little community. It happens everywhere, and it happens to so many people that you would never think, oh, their family seems so nice and so happy. Nobody it's, knows what goes on behind those closed doors. It's it's kind of like the duck in the pond. It looks very calm on the top, but underneath the paddling, the, like, the paddling crazy. like crazy. You and better believe it. There's there's families that have that kind of situation, right. and 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 problems in the family are not restricted to, to any group, class, organization, no. or anything yeah. else. It, no. it is something that can occur at any time. So at any rate, the judge back in Seattle said that I've got pro professional people working with these families and mm -hmm. these children. But I'm not sure I'm getting the child's whole story. What if I had a trained volunteer who had nothing else to do than pay attention to the child? And I think I might get a full range of information then from all the professionals and the volunteer. So we started the program and it worked successfully. So the premise is that we take volunteers, people who have a heart, who are interested in children, have a, some time to spend with, with children, we train them as to what they need to do and the, and the situations they may encounter and how to handle those. And then we match them up with, with children that they can spend some time with, uh, make a relationship. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's important, if kids end up in, out of their, placed out of their home and in foster homes mm -hmm. and whatnot, is they, they have a, a harder and harder time bonding with anybody. Right. They, they, they become detached. They don't have a support system. They don't have a safety net. They don't have somebody to they confide in. They put up a barrier in. because their their heart is breaking. And if if I if I get make a, get close to you and then I have to leave, well, that hurts, and sure. I'm tired of hurting. And then they don't learn how to so, how to trust other people. Yeah, and yeah. One, so one of the things that the volunteer the prim, one primary thing that volunteer needs to do is make a relationship with that child and let them know that that relationship is going to last as long as the child wants it to. After the court case is over, after they're 18, 20, 25 years old, if they want to, this is a person they it can call a, and a say, nice friendship. What, what do I do about this? I haven't right. talked to you for a long time, but I've got this situation, and I remember that you could help me before. I wondered if you could help answer this question for me. That kind of consistency, that kind of long-term connection. And the other thing the volunteers try to do is make sure that they have wider range of resources available, other places to go. So if you need a question answered about... And does the school about, get involved? We work with the schools. School. That's what I meant. That's, that's the, the volunteer uh, has a wide range of, of, of ability to contact um, all the agencies and all the resources the child might encounter. So 
The volunteer is going to be in contact with therapists. They're going to be in contact with doctors. They're going to be in contact with school people. They're going to be in contact with anybody or any organization that this child has connection with. Great. And make sure that the child has good connections with all those resources and starts building their own network of support. Now, I want you to tell us, John, if someone is interested, what is the criteria that they must meet to become a, a part of CASA? Well, the, the first thing they have to have is a good heart. They've got to care about kids and, and, and have some time to spend with kids. Okay, that's 99% of Amador County. That's it. There you go. But after that, they get a hold of me. We sit down and explain the program in a little more detail. They make an application. We do a complete background check. We give them an extensive training program. We match them up with a child. Mm -hmm. on the basis of what works for the child on, based on their needs, what works for the volunteer. Some, some cases are going to require quite a bit of time, some mm -hmm. of them not so much. So we look at time availability, we look at interest areas, we look at age ranges, what, what age range the volunteer is most comfortable with. Right. Then we make a good match, what we hope is a good match, sure. and then follow up with them. And the, the one thing that's different about this than from a mentor program, which we also operate, mm -hmm. But the difference between the mentor program and the CASA program is the CASA volunteer periodically writes reports for the court. So okay. the judge knows what's going on. That was the purpose of the, of the program. Give the judge good information. So uh, periodically they write court reports, they appear in court, and make sure that the judge is aware of whatever's going on with that case. And everybody wins. And everybody wins. And there's a lot of success stories. Don't think that there isn't. There's a lot of success stories that happen through this program because it's it's people working one-on-one. -on -one. These children know that there's somebody there with them every step of the way. They're not doing this alone. Good, bad, or indifferent. Absolutely. And, and so the volunteer has a, what we, we expect to be a good experience. The child, we expect to have a good experience. The family is going to end up with a good experience. It's a win-win for everybody. Don't you find, though, John, today, uh, you can't turn on a, a television program or listen to a radio d talk shows or whatever where we're hearing all of this um, terrible, terrible events for these children to go through. I mean, some of them are, in, uh, obviously, death it, it, it happens to some of these children. What the heck is going on that these people don't know how to parent? Or these children have to be treated like this. Well, well there's there are many explanations. Um, the the high-paced society, uh, the unemployment, the 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 cost of housing, right. um, losing your job, no 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 network, a whole variety of but explanations. But an innocent child did not cause any of this. That's what the child has to remember. That's because right. In so many cases in the child abuse, the child says, "I must have done something no, wrong." No, you didn't. And the first thing that you, everybody needs to do is convince the child no, it's they not did you. not do anything wrong, and no. the system is there to support them, right. not to punish them or 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 cause or change their bad behavior. Right. It wasn't the cause. But when we get into situations in which the the family situation is deteriorated such that the child goes into foster care, that's a whole right. new dimension, and we need to make that a healthy healing situation Absolutely. and not something more damaging. Where can people reach you? The uh, CASA program is uh, under the ATCA umbrella. Okay. So if you want to get a hold of me, call the ATCA office, 223-1485. Okay. Ask for me. Uh, the CASA Online. program, extension 264, if you happen to remember that. Okay. If nothing else, look up ATCA in the phone book and ask them about the CASA program. Okay. I'll be happy to talk to anybody. Wonderful. Love to do that. Wonderful. Thank you for your help, and thank you for giving so much of yourself to so many children that, that need it. We are going to, I'm going to have to leave you. i got to run over to Alan real fast. So I want to uh, let you know, get a hold of John, and we're going to, actually, we're going to go to a break. So, John. Thank bless you, you very much. God bless you, dear. It's a it's a pleasure working with you. And God bless you.